Hello everybody, this is Joe with another SQL Skills Insider demo video. And in today's video, I'm going to cover deadlocking fundamentals, uh, specifically around how to collect deadlock information, the, the various techniques that you can use to collect deadlock information. And in a second video later, um, at another time, I will go over how to interpret the data that you've collected. So getting right to it, um, some of you might have heard of the different trace flags, trace flag 1204, which was used for older versions of SQL Server, so for example, SQL Server 2000. And then starting with 2005, we had trace flag 1222. And that provided an XML-like format, and it has about 18 data points more than trace flag 1204. So if you're using 2005 and up, then you want to go with trace flag 1222. And I want to show you how to enable this trace flag. This essentially, when enabled, uh, will capture deadlock information into the SQL Server error log. So the first method I want to show you is how to enable trace flag 1222 using SQL Server Configuration Manager. And so what I'm going to do is open up SQL Server Configuration Manager, right-click the actual service under SQL Server Services, right-click the service account, go to the Advanced tab, and then under startup parameters, I'm going to scroll all the way to the end and then put in a semicolon and dash T, it's uppercase T, 1222. <clears throat> okay. Click apply. Okay. And that's going to require a restart. And so what this means is upon restart, trace flag 1222 is going to be enabled and it will not be cleared unless you manually clear it and restart the SQL Server instance again, and, and I'll show that in a little bit. So restarting the service, and while that's starting up, I'm going to go through a quick deadlock example so that we have something to actually walk through in the SQL Server error log. So in this first example, I'm going to connect to the AdventureWorks DW database, and I'm going to use the transaction isolation level serializable, and that will play more into the second video of when we're interpreting the, the deadlock output. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to enable this isolation level of serializable. I'm going to begin a transaction, and I'm going to update a specific row from the fact internet sales table. So connecting to the SQL Server instance, I've gone ahead and executed that. And now I'm going to uh, connect to a different session, so I have a new query window. And in a second connection, I'm going to also connect to the same database, AdventureWorks DW. I'm going to again set the isolation level to serializable, and I'm also going to update a row in the table. But the difference is I'll be updating a different row in that table, so a different sales order number. Okay, that's executed, and now I'm going to jump back to the first connection, and I'm going to execute a query that queries the row that I just updated in the other session that I just switched from. So I'm executing that and I'm blocked, so I'm executing the query. Again, the transaction is open. It's waiting for the other session to commit. I'm going to jump back to that session, and in this session, I'm going to try to select from Fact Internet Sales for the sales order number that was, in turn, updated in the other session. So now we've got, we've both been waiting. This time it uh, uh, returned the row right away. If I hop to the second session, I'm going to see a deadlock occurred. So it shows transaction process ID 51 was deadlocked. So that happened right away. Now, because I restarted the SQL Server instance with the trace flag in the advanced options, if I go to my SQL error log, I'm going to see the deadlock output. And right away, you see that it happened right here. Starting, it shows waiter ID. And then if I actually scroll down to the beginning of the event, it shows the, the tag deadlock list. So we have information about this. Again, in a second video, I'm going to walk through how to interpret this data. Now, in terms of preferences, you can look at this in the SQL uh, error log through SQL Server Management Studio. But I also, if I have that output uh, in, in, uh, in the SQL Server error log, I prefer to look at it uh, on the file system. So I'm going to just show you quickly what that looks like opening it up straight from the file system. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to click on the, the latest error log for the SQL Server instance. And let's go ahead and use Notepad. 
All right, so in this case, if I scroll down, you're going to see reverse order of when the deadlock actually appeared. Let me just resize it. There we go. So deadlock list this time is appearing first, and then we go through uh, the different nodes, for example, process list, and then scrolling further down, you can actually see the owner list. And we'll walk through this a little bit later, but if you notice it, it comes into, into a different order. So uh, in cases where I'm troubleshooting and I have a SQL Server error log, I tend to look at it straight uh, in a notepad view or edit pad uh, versus actually looking at SQL Server Management Studio. It just seems more readable that way. So that was one technique, and what I'm going to do is disable that option so I can show you other techniques. Uh, hopping back to advanced options, I'm going to clear out the trace flag. Apply and restart. <clears throat> now, next method you can perform to start capturing deadlock information is uh, enabling trace flag 1222 via the DBCC trace on command. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. One is to enable it just for the session that you're in, which doesn't usually make sense, uh, but uh, if you go ahead and just execute dbcc trace on, if I click, uh, if I execute dbcc trace status, I'll see that 1222 is enabled. But if you see global as zero, which means that it only applies to my session. So if you have multiple connections involved in a deadlock, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And plus, if I close out my session it's not enabled, it's not going to write a deadlock um, chain to the SQL Server error log. So if you're enabling this for uh, uh, all sessions, and I'm going to just do dbcc trace off to disable this, you want to use the negative one uh, argument as the second parameter. So I'm clicking uh, or executing 1222, negative one, and then if I check trace status, this time it shows global as one. And you can also check dbcc trace status in a new window just to confirm, yep, this is indeed enabled for other sessions and sure enough it appears. So uh, same exact output uh, that 1222 in the startup parameters except if you restart the SQL Server instance that 1222 gets cleared. So if you want to make sure that uh, deadlock tracking persists across restarts you're going to want to do it as a startup option. There's other options I'm going to show you as well uh, but 1222 only applies for the lifetime of you either disabling it through trace off or through uh, actually uh, putting it up as a, as a startup flag. So dbcc trace off 1222 negative one um, I'm going to disable that and check the status and the status is cleared so it's no longer enabled. Alright another technique is to use SQL profiler to capture the deadlock information. So I'm going to go ahead and do tools SQL server profiler <clears throat> connect to the SQL Server instance and I'm going to use a blank template and in terms of event selection I'm going to go to locks and the very first option to check deadlock graph is what I'm going to select. Okay so now let's go ahead and reproduce a deadlock again going to just make sure that I've rolled back everything. This was the, the deadlock victim. It should have already rolled back. Roll back the transaction here. Okay, yeah, so everything's fine here. So I'm going to reproduce a deadlock again. Okay, we got a deadlock, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, now with the deadlock generated, if you open up SQL Server Profiler and the deadlock graph uh, event was indeed captured, you'll see uh, one row entry for the deadlock event and then also a visualization if you click on the specific event. So below, if I hover over uh, one of these circles, with, uh, in this case with a cross out of it, it means that this was the deadlock victim. 
and the deadlock victim was running the query against uh, sales order SO75090 versus the other query that uh, won, so to speak, and it was not the victim that was running against SO75086. So this visualization is sometimes useful, but typically what I'll do is extract out the event data. So in this case, I'll just call it example XDL. And if you open up that file, for example, in Notepad, you'll see familiar output uh, similar to what you saw in the SQL Server error log. And when I actually opened up the error log, either through SQL Server Management Studio or through the error log itself. So same information, and again, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to interpret this information in a, in a separate video. So that's one method, having SQL Profiler up and running. Now if you're running in SQL Server 2008 or beyond, uh, and you have the system health session running in the background uh, through extended events, if that session is already running, then you're already capturing deadlock information or, or recent deadlock information. And what I did here is I copied a query that uh, Jonathan Cahayas uh, put together and, and Paul Randall modified recently on a blog post. But essentially, I, I know that the uh, system health session was running. And so I'm going to execute this query against sys.dmxe session targets and uh, join to xe sessions. And go ahead and execute that. And sure enough, uh, it shows the one deadlock event that was recently captured. If I click on this, it'll show me the XML editor in SQL Server Management Studio, which is a little bit friendlier of a, a format than even the notepad, uh, opening it up in the notepad. And so this didn't require any trace flag to be enabled. It didn't require me to have profiler running. It was already running in the background. It's lightweight. So if you have 2008 or beyond, then this would definitely be the preferred option to just go ahead and look at uh, the system health session. So hopefully this has been a good introduction to how to find deadlocks. And in the next video that you'll have from me, I'll, I'll review how to interpret that deadlock information. But until next time, thanks for watching and thanks for being a SQL Skills Insider.